Welcome to the real dating show. <laughs> Dear Shandy. Welcome to your first ever Dear Shandy Love is Blind recap listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Ah. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, me too. It's our first time recapping a show that isn't The Bachelor. Yeah, you could say this is a uh, this is a whole new world. <laughs> we were. Uh, h- how should we put this delicately? We didn't know what to expect going into it. Honestly, as no, we, I'm, s- I'm, I'm I'm really excited to hear how you put this delicately. <laughs> Well, at the end of the Bachelor season, so Bachelor season 27, we just did the finale recap last week. Mm-hmm, yeah. We made it clear that you had never seen an episode of Love is Blind, and I had only seen some. I had never finished a whole season. I confess, I only watched Giannina's scenes from season one because mm. we had her and Blake Horstman on the podcast for Love Fest, which I will link right here. But so we've never really watched a season from the beginning, like just straight through. Mm. And should we just get going? and make our thoughts known as we yeah, go along. Yeah, let's just get going because we really we really have to get our legs under us with this thing. Yeah, and just like with our first ever Dear Shandy Bachelor recap, we, you know, it took a, a minute to find our footing with that as well. Yeah. I think our longtime Shandys might find this amusing. <laughs> We're like very <laughs> discombobulated right now. Season four, I will say that when we said we would be recapping this season, we got lots of comments saying that this was not the finest season. Yeah, and I I think that those people may have been onto something. (laughs) And by the way, this recap will be just for the pods. So this is three episodes plus like 10 minutes. So episode one launches with us discussing how high budget the show feels. Oh, yeah. Andy, you were marveling at the fact that they clearly built this entire thing for this show. Yeah, it's like a Squid Game level building operation. (laughs) Netflix. Yeah. God, they have money. They built like kitchens. It's insane. Stylish kitchens. Yeah, it feels experimental. It feels like some science fiction movie where in the end they all, most of them get killed. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Nick and Vanessa Lachey arrive. I mean, what a great hosting job. They show up for like 10 minutes and then that's it. Give me that job. Mm -hmm. All right, so first up we get to know Kwame. Mm -hmm. His first pod time shown is with Chelsea. They agree that Saturday is the best day of the week. Would you agree with that, Andy? That's a very uh, controversial opinion. You think so? No. Oh, you're being sarcastic. (laughs) But I think Friday is possibly better. I mean, yeah, there's an argument to be made for Friday, but there are many, many, many songs written about Saturday. When I was, to be honest with you, I'm always a, uh, I'm a sort of a fatalist. So like once the good thing is happening, I'm already sad. Yeah. Because I like the anticipation. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I actually liked Thursdays the best. Thursdays, I was anticipating Friday, which is the day where I'm really feeling that Saturday is coming. Oh so. my goodness. Okay, so we learned that Chelsea brought 21 pairs of shoes. That's a lot, right? There's a lot of shoes. And he reveals he was a pro soccer player and an injury is what took him out. Hmm. That's heartbreaking. And in his confessional, Kwame says that the most important traits to him are empathy and compassion. And thus begins our love affair with Kwame. I can't imagine anyone watching at least these first three episodes and not being like, yeah, he's the best. Well, Kwame is like, like in these shows, I find that sometimes out of the gate you're like oh that's my favorite and mm-hmm. then by the last episode you're almost ashamed that you ever that you thought picked that, that person totally. yeah you feel you feel bad about yourself yeah but Kwame I mean not to spoil solid solid mm-hmm. throughout. okay and now we hear from Micah Kwame says she's amazing she's his number one she seems into him too and Micah now talks to Paul in the pods we learn her favorite place to visit is Positano oh, I used to say that yeah you know I used to say Positano was my favorite place And then everyone started saying Positano was their favorite place. And I stopped saying it. Oh, you felt like you had to be different. Yeah. That was like liking an indie band back in the day. And then when they became big, you were like, uh. mm." You want it to be yours. Everyone wants to feel special. Paul says that Micah's voice tickles her brain. It's interesting to me how, I guess, what I felt I was missing from this show was how we got from, oh, her voice tickles my brain to I'm falling in love. Like, I guess I felt I was sold a show that was really about these deep conversations. And Mm -hmm. I actually felt the transition just suddenly leaped. I didn't, I didn't get much transition is what I'm saying. I agree. It made me suspicious that there's something else at work. And I don't want to already, I don't want to rain on the parade Mm -hmm. too heavy right now, because I think there are some interesting elements, a very interesting sociological experiment going on here. 
But I do get the feeling that now that they are self-aware of the show, oh. well past the first season, yes. people are like, Instagram, TikTok, uh, money, money. We're going to get to that. <laughs> money, <laughs> money. And more money. <laughs> but I do think that they're thinking like, is this person like going to make me a star mm. out of the gate? And I, I don't think that's, I, I'm not saying everyone's thinking that and I'm t- not saying that that even anyone is only thinking that. But I do think that that has to be in the room. I think it would be absurd to imagine it's not. You would be very, very naive to think that none of them are thinking, well, if I leave here with someone, I'm making it to the next level, the yeah. next checkpoint, yeah. which means I'm on the show longer. I mean, we we talk about that with The Bachelor, how it's there's a direct benefit to just staying on the show longer. So why wouldn't you Absolutely. begin to think that you were falling in love with someone who, and I, look, there's also alcohol flowing. Every, you're talking about your feelings all the time. I think it's very different from The Bachelor, obviously. But there are some similarities. Yeah. And I think when you get to season four of a show where season one, people were walking out with one or one plus million followers, maybe two million. I think Giannina has two million followers. Two million It's very followers. naive to think that that's not playing a role in this. And I'm not pretending anyone doesn't think that. It's like a game show where there's like a, a platform hanging from the ceiling and on that platform is a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And you are in, it's the same exact setup as love is blind, Uh except you're just trying to figure out without, you're not allowed to tell anybody, but you're just trying to figure out how tall everybody is. Okay. So you're trying to find the tallest person without asking them their height or you know what they do. (laughs) Like you have to ask their specific questions and then you pick the person and then you stand on their shoulders to try to get the money yeah and it, and the o- there's only one combination of all the people that's tall enough to grab the money so now we get paul he is talking to amber in the pod he loves that she's a flight attendant and amber now in her confessional we learn that she's been married twice and according to her she was not appreciated now we get jacqueline uh, she likens to being a kid in a candy store and i have to admit i think i would see this in the same way yeah. first of all voices You've said before that the first thing you noticed about me was my I, voice. I think it's so critical. I Your voice is what sold me right away, instantly. And my actually, my mother had a blind date with my dad, and she first talked to him on the telephone. On the telephone. Yes. And um, she said that within five seconds of hearing his voice, she's like, we're getting married. And we've joked before about inventing an app where you can only communicate with voices. You mean a telephone? <laughs> No, you swipe based on voice. Anyway, the point being that... No, 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 I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, I mock, but that's actually a good idea. You're not allowed to show pictures. So it's basically love is blind out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening, Netflix? Yeah, just the combo of voices and the... in Like, you, there's no... You're not getting confused by pheromones. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. really just like, are you getting me? When I throw the ball, are you catching it and yeah. throwing it back at me? Or or to me, rather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or something's getting lost in translation. I, I do think that I would enjoy this. I think you would really enjoy <laughs> it, and I think you would be very desirable. I don't know. I don't know. It's It's funny. I don't know if I would be. I but, know you would be. Yeah, but that's what you'd say. You're always going to say that. <laughs> I think you would be a hit. Yeah? Yeah. Funny. Funny huh. goes very far. Huh. Okay, so Tiffany now. I love that she's 36 years old, by the way. I was starved to see a 36-year-old woman on yeah. my screen, and she's lovely. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's talking. She's into Brett, who's 35. And now we see Arena. Zach reveals that his mother was a stripper. He really opens up to Arena here. He says he was on autopilot when his mother died. He really wants a wife and kids. And Irina reveals that she came from Russia as a child. Uh, he says that she has a powerful a powerful presence. They seem to bond in a way that I'm going to be honest, I didn't really find I was able to keep up with maybe. Or maybe I wasn't able to keep up with it or I just didn't really get it. Yeah, neither did I. Yeah, I never really was into this pairing no, from the get-go. Nor was I. And now we meet Bliss. Zach says that she's a 10 on intellect. Uh, We learned that she studied biology and now works in cybersecurity. We learned that Zach's favorite song is I Hope You Dance by Leanne Wombat. Hmm. And we paused here because you you didn't know the song. I did not. And I was like, I'll play it for you. And then I didn't know it after you played it. (laughs) I still don't know it. Yeah, Andy, you said it's like a car commercial. Yeah, a great, that would be, if I had a car company, Uh I'm paying, who who I said, Wombat? Yeah. (laughs) I would um I would be very honored to have that song 
to represent my car. Yeah. I'd be honored. Oh, yeah. It's like a Volvo, like driving up Absolutely. a mountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I more, hope you more dance. Basic. Yeah. And then the car is like speeding. Totally. Is it a Volvo? Oh, you don't think it's a Volvo? Yeah, well, Volvo is more cutting edge. Mm. Uh, Bliss reveals that it was her mom's song for her oh, and wow. she holds back tears. Here. That's a real coincidence. Yeah. Well, I mean, they seem to think so. They start crying. Oh, she starts crying. This is a very moving moment is yeah. that they have this song. They say they can both sing the song and she wants her mom to have that dance with her at her wedding. And Andy, here you said, I feel like they should have glory holes. That's the second stage. And then you meet them. <laughs> You were really struggling with the concept of this show. What was bothering you the most about this? Well, a couple of things. One is I don't quite understand the format. Like, are they being, is there a schedule? Is there like on the board you go up like, you know, to see who's seeing yeah. who that day? Or do you actually sign up? You're like, I want to see this person, this person. Does that person want to see you? It's yeah, almost like swiping I agree with on that. Tinder. Totally. I was also missing that. It's like, how do they arrange to see that person again? Do they yeah. request each other? And does it only work if you request each other? Right. And then uh, another layer, obviously, you know, to try to, I'm going to try to poke holes in the show. I get it. Uh, easy. This is easy pickings. But but there are some broad holes I would like to poke. Um, <laughs> I understand that you can get to know someone very well, you know, with talking and just talking. Uh-huh. But I think there needs to be some kind of physical engagement before an engagement before an engagement yeah uh-huh. and i don't say that because obviously i like i'm you know they're like oh he's a genius no one ever thought of that <laughs> love is blind should have them see each other yeah. no i don't mean see each other i just mean like maybe even just smell each other yeah or like touch may- touch hands touch hands Ooh. yes uh, basically some form of a glory hole whether it's a <laughs> It's not that glorious, like it's just a hand thing, yeah. or maybe it's just a smell hole. Like you like you sort of push your body, it's like a vent. Oh my you god. You kind of push your body up and you just kinda of, like it's a fan and you get to smell each I other. Just, the hook of the show is it's like, oh, okay, now I see you and I'm either like, uh, eh, or I'm like, yay. It would be a little more interesting if there was just one little transitionary move. It's still blind. Mm-hmm. It's blind, but who says just because you're blind doesn't mean you can't smell and you can't touch. Yeah. If love is blind. I actually think that would be insanely hot. So, can can you, you imagine, imagine how hot that would yeah, be? Yeah, like you're just like touching each other's hands. All you get is like a finger to one finger each. And you're just like. Imagine, <laughs> yes. It's, you know, it's like, it's like you're in like, like a, like, like a, j- a adjoining prison cells. And they're like, you drill like a little hole through the wall. Yeah. And you're just like fingering each other's <laughs> fingers. <laughs> I don't know why that looks so wrong with you. Yeah. I mean, the Glory Hole Company is now like, guys, we thought of this a long time ago. Glory Hole Inc. (laughs) Okay. So now back to Micah. Her main interests are Paul and Kwame. And then we're at Tiffany. It was very like fat. It was like. Yeah. There was a lot lot of of stuff happening. Yeah. And you see the rejects very fast. Well, because when when we see them, we're like, "Who's that?" Which I actually kind of prefer. The one thing about the show which immediately struck me as a, as as a, a leg up on The Bachelor yeah. is that you get rid of the riffraff fast. Like yeah. on The Bachelor, they can drag sort of jokey contestants along for a long yeah, a jokey while. or pretend that they're not jokey, like pretend right. that they actually had a chance when really they'll stick around till episode six or something. Yeah. When you're like, "Come on, this is a waste yeah. of my time." They get rid of the, the junk pretty quick here. You don't say junk. They, Sorry. they seem like lovely people. Oh, no, no. But I apparently mean... their personalities are not compelling enough. It's not funny to think. I don't know how I would feel about that. Yeah. It's like if you, if no one takes interest in you, I, would, actually, I would feel very insecure after I that. I would feel worse about yeah. that than I would if they saw me in person and just decided they were interested. I agree. I would agree. Okay, so now we're back to Tiffany. She's in the pod with Brett. She says she was feeling sexy and is wearing heels. And as they're marveling at wearing the same color because they describe their color to each other, Andy, you were distracted by how many sauces they had for their wings. <laughs> yeah, how many sauces do you need? Apparently, like six. <laughs> six sauces. And there were like six wings, six sauces. You could have a different <laughs> sauce for every wing. We eventually learned that they waste as much food on this show as they do on The Bachelor. No dating show is given a green light unless there's a certain level of food waste. I literally apparently. never saw one person take one bite of food in these no. three episodes. We saw them eating when they would be off in their quarters, but when they were talking to each other, I didn't understand why the food was there. It's food is like decoration. They're just drinking. They're drinking. There's it's little, okay. It's decoration. Okay, a few moments later, Tiffany's shoes are on the floor. Her bare feet are on the sofa. And I got to say, I respect this. Oh, I yeah. thought it was funny that she's like, I'm, I'm just sexy. I'm wearing heels. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> we're back to Micah. Now she's talking to Paul. She asks Paul if he'd want to know when he was going to die. And he says yes. 
would you want to know that, Andy? No. Do not want to know. You wouldn't want to know that just to have the information so you could live your life a certain no. way? No. I don't want to know, but there's no benefit to it. Yeah, but Unless you could... someone tells me I'm going to live forever, then I'm like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. You would make different choices. I would make some different choices. I think you would become very depressed. I would be knowing you. No matter what it is, whether it's 10 minutes from now or a hundred years from now, I would become depressed for the rest of my life. The human brain is not built to know that information. Mm -hmm. Some people are, maybe. But I, I can't relate to that. It would take away some of the magic of life. Yeah. The I magic, agree. this this sort of like illusion that we're like gonna be here forever. Yeah. I, I'm not into I that. I have a bit of that. Do, do you want to know when you're going to die? No, I would not want to know this yeah. information. No. And I know they're joking around and they're like, oh, yeah, we would we would spend our final month napping. But mm. I, I was struck by this conversation. I was like, damn, no, I could not no. disagree more. Don't want, to, don't want to know. Paul says he wants to live life more fully, be more present. She says she wants to see beauty in every day. And Andy, here is when you said, I have to tell my mom not to watch this. <laughs> you don't think your mom would like this show? No. Really? Yeah, she wouldn't like it. What would she not like about it? Uh, just based on her commentary on The Bachelor, I'm feeling that this would not hit her sweet spot. And she's not into The Bachelor either. No. Okay, so she just doesn't like reality dating shows. She's into not being into The Bachelor. Okay. Like she looks forward to watching The Bachelor to not be into it. Yeah. I find Love is Blind is a little harder to enjoy not being into. Yeah. Because I think it takes itself that much more seriously it takes itself seriously and there's no like kind of narrative plot line mm. it's just a lot of conversations yeah there's no storyline in the bachelor they really make an effort whether it's you know, for better or worse they yeah. make an effort to create a storyline yeah there's nothing here but i think that that will change like i okay the feeling i'm getting from this show and i'm sure i feel like our shandies are going to be like this is what it is this is what it is so they sure, can tell yeah, us how yeah, we're yeah. wrong but i actually feel a bit of like survivor vibes from this in that the first two or three episodes of survivor can actually feel a little slow, except for the challenges, like the challenges you're like, Oh yay, finally a big challenge. But all these little conversations and some of them are, most of them actually are dead ends. Yeah. You know, and you need those dead ends to show which things are like pulling ahead. Yeah. Those early alliances. And here it's the same thing. It's like you need to show Paul and Amber to show why Paul and Micah end up together. You know, at the show is a lot of work to get through. Yeah. But I will say that it's it, it feels better after than it does during. <laughs> like a workout? Yes. <laughs> so, Andy, you see what I've got here? I do. <laughs> nice. Really nailed that one. I have a box of Mosh protein bars that I'm completely obsessed with. And by the way, this box is not what was sent to us by Mosh when we first took Mosh on no. to advertise. We've gone above and beyond the free items they're sending us. And we are now <laughs> purchasing Mosh with I, our own money. Yeah, I am now a paying customer because I loved the chocolate crunch bars so much. I couldn't be without it. No. So now I keep these and I eat them all the time. This I, is what gets us through podcasts. Quite we, literally. We literally take a Mosh break now. Yeah. You say, do you want a Mosh? I literally say this. Like when I feel you fading, I'm like, do you want to take a mosh break? Because I'll feel myself getting a little hungry too. A little foggy. That's what makes it difficult because sometimes you're like, oh, I'm hungry, but you know, I'll eat something and I'll be fine. But what makes mosh different is that it's fuel for your brain as, as much as it is for your body. And I will note that we had to cut and restart at some point during this recording because I was licking pieces of mosh out of my teeth. <laughs> With and glee. I was like, no one wants to hear that. No one of- wants to hear that, but I wanted to. I wanted to get those pieces because they were that good. Mm-hmm. Mosh tastes way better than any energy or protein bar I've ever had. It's so hands true. down. And 140 to 160 calories, by the way, per bar, which is a really good ratio for 12 grams of protein. Mm, yeah. But another number I wanted to talk about because I thought this was really impressive. So at 140 calories for a chocolate crunch bar, 12 grams of protein, there's also, get this, eight grams of fiber. Damn. That's literally as much fiber as you would get from a bar that's just a fiber bar. So it's basically a fiber bar, a protein bar, and a brain bar in one. <laughs> a brain bar as well, because Mosh also has brain boosting ingredients like ashwagandha. Mm, lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. And you know they were formulated by top neuroscientists and nutritionists. Yeah, I feel like you could have like a, almost a Rocky-like montage <laughs> of them making this bar. That's how excited I am about Mosh. Da-da-da-da. Yeah. <laughs> Da-da-da-da-da. 
I'm done. I got nothing left. So don't settle for a mediocre snack when you can nourish your body and mind with the fuel it needs to succeed. Head to moshlife.com slash shandy to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack. Again, that's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack, which includes all six mouthwatering flavors. Again, that's moshlife.com, M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E.com slash shandy. So Andy, if you had to use one adjective to describe your sleep last night, what would you say it was? Dry. I was going to say cloud-like. But you know, clouds, no, they're not really dry. <laughs> no, they're actually the antithesis of dry. But somehow cozy earth bedsheets managed to marry a cloud-like consistency and a dryness because they're also cooling sheets. And unbelievably silky smooth. It's like a combination between silky and velvety and cloudy. It's a swaddling experience. Yeah, they're hands down the best sheets I've ever owned. And I'm not just saying that because this is an ad. And you're not only saying that, and I'm not only saying that, but we get... Almost every ad we do for Cozy, Shandy's come and say that too it's in the comments so true. section. They're like, okay, I caved. I got the Cozy Earth sheets because you told us to and you you weren't wrong. Yeah. No one's ever said like, I got your Cozy Earth sheets and they're <laughs> crap. That's because Cozy Earth sheets are made with viscose from bamboo, making them insanely soft. Super soft. Honestly, the first time I felt them, I was like, how is this? And you would never expect the hardest substance that nature produces, actually organic nature, mm -hmm. to be the softest sheet. Yes. But it kind of makes sense in this topsy-turvy world. <laughs> and your lounge pants that you wear in every single episode that we record of this podcast, you can lift your leg right now and show it off. There you go. Very good. You can do better than that. Higher. Higher? Higher. Something's going to break. <laughs> Your pants are also cozy earth. They're super slouchy soft. And they never lose their color. No matter how many times I wear them, no matter how much beating they take. I just realized enamel, I think, is harder than bamboo. Is it? But we're nitpicking. You, it's one of the hardest substances in nature. Should we start a sheet company that makes sheets from enamel? <laughs> So right now, our listeners, the Shandies, can save a whopping 35% on Cozy Earth. But hurry, this New Year's offer ends soon. Go to CozyEarth.com slash Shandy and be sure to enter Shandy at checkout to save 35%. CozyEarth.com slash Shandy. So we're back to Kwame now. He's with Micah. He tells her he has a strong connection elsewhere. And she says it's hard to understand how another connection could compete with their connection. Honestly, mm. looking back at this now... In retrospect, there's a couple things that make me kind of side eye Micah, yeah. but this is one of them. She almost seems defiant. Like, how could you have another connection? When I felt to me that she, he was just being really honest, yeah. actually, even though Micah was his favorite. Yeah. And she asks if his other connection validates him more or reciprocates feelings more. And he says yes. And she's just like, mm. Mm. she's not like, OK, well, let me do that. This is where it struck me. This is a lot of us observing the show just as newbies. How much more effusive you must be. You can't rely on touch. You can't rely on a knowing glance. No, you're, you're, you're really, you've got your hands. It's like one of those escape artists who's handcuffed, blindfolded, and then tied up and thrown in one of those crates filled with water. <laughs> that viewing it, I mean, no, just kidding. <laughs> He asks if they have something that could last. And she says, yes, she can see a future with him. And he says, he's so sure about her. He wants to propose earlier. And she asks why he feels like that, which to me feels a little like fishing, considering she doesn't really seem to give him much. Mm. He says he's been spitten for a whole six days. <laughs> I didn't realize how funny that was until I read it. He says he waits all day just to talk to her. And she says she has another strong connection and she doesn't want what ifs because she didn't turn every stone. This, I don't love this. Mm. I don't love this, the, this tendency. It's like, he says he has a strong connection. She's like, what? How could another connection be as strong as ours? And then she kind of like forces him to say why he's so into her. And then he's like, I would propose now if I could. And she's like, well, I have this other connection. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he doesn't seem too stoked about this. And now Micah reports back to the women. She says, I would rather leave here single than leave in a rushed relationship. <laughs> Okay, so now Tiffany talks to Brett in the pods. She says she can't wait to just hug him and see him. He reveals now, this is actually super sad. He reveals his oldest brother was with someone for 10 years before getting engaged. And his brother actually ended up dying in a car crash. He lost control of his car, 
five minutes from his house. Mm, mm. And Andy, you, this is actually, you were talking about this the other day before we watched yeah. this, about how most car accidents happen within... Very close to home. Yeah. Because you feel relaxed, like you're already home. Right? That's so sad. Yeah, it is sad. He says that experience made him recognize his own mortality and that his family, instead of all attending a wedding, they ended up attending a Ugh, funeral. I mean, rough. that is just oh, chillingly mm. sad. And now Paul is in the pods with Amber. They appear to be playing dress up there's lots of props yeah i feel like it's like those photo booths at the wedding <laughs> yes. it, do you want to have a new orleans date <laughs> he asks if she's ever cheated and she says she'd like to think that she wouldn't but it likely would have gone down that path in her last marriage because of how unhappy she was and she says here that when people cheat there's always a reason and he uh he is not into this he calls this a red flag and she says that was the past and she would never cheat on him there's some brief tension here but they get over this really quickly mm. paul gives her flowers she brings them back to the women's quarters and irina calls them so pretty about yeah, she a thousand really is times into those flowers yeah and then she and micah seem to go off together and talk a little bit of shit we'll put a pin in that mm. but that definitely seems to be a theme so now mike is in the pods with paul micah says if he seemed all in on her she'd feel the same way but she doesn't think that's where he is <laughs> he asks between him and Kwame who she would say yes to and she says why you you mm, i would say yes to course. and he's like let's do it then that's it yeah yeah so that's we both say yes we both say yes I don't know why. I find it unsatisfying. I find it un anticlimactic. I guess because there's so much more show to go. And yeah, they have to spend time together, live together, or get actually married and all that stuff. But I found a lot of these sort of anticlimactic. You know what the thing is? I kept trying to think while I was watching this. I kept trying to put myself in their shoes. Yeah. And I was just wondering if I was in that same situation. You're isolated. Yeah. There's a race. There's, like a, you, race. there's a deadline. Yeah, and in some cases, you are literally like in a race with someone else for the same person. Well, it's a, it's like a game show, but that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm thinking is that if I was in like sort of sequestered with a bunch of guys, we're all like, we're all, all we're thinking about is women. Yeah. I go to sleep thinking about women or woman <laughs> and I, and I wake up and I go, it's just like a lot of thought about the opposite sex. And then I go into this room and I hear a voice. Uh -huh. And honestly, as long as that voice is saying things that are like not offensive to me, they're kind of just fine. Uh -huh. And it's a voice that I really like, like the sound, the actual voice. I'm like, I like the way this person talks. Yeah. The timbre. Yeah. And we have a good rapport. Yeah. There's a respectable rapport. It doesn't have to be like, you know, fireworks. Yeah. It's almost like Stockholm syndrome mm. where like you, you just become like enamored by your captor eventually. Yeah. Because you want them to like you so that you can have, yeah. I don't know what. Plus you can't see them. So you can start to imagine them to be whatever you want them to be. And yeah. they say that they don't care, but I think they do. They care. Of course they Care. Yeah. But I do think that there would come a point where I was like, I don't, I like the sound of your voice and I'm all pent up. And we're woman. being so sincere with each other all the time. Yeah. It's so much sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much. Yeah. I think I would get to the point where I'm like, well, it's a game. So I've got to make a decision at some point. And I'm really like at this point, extremely horny. Mm -hmm. And I really like the sound of this voice. I'm good. That's it. There's something about this show that I find a little holier than thou. Like hearing you talk about it, it's the, the idea. It's like, oh, in this looks obsessed world, which, yes, I agree it is a looks obsessed world. I agree that the apps are way too superficial. But I, to say that this is some sort of antidote is like totally absurd no. to me because there are these other factors at play where you are you start to like imagine someone to be someone that they're not. Like, is that really better? No, because then when you see them, unless they fit some realm of what you like yeah. physically, it's not going to work out. And that's the other thing that we're, to talk about the uncomfortable topic of leagues. The show kind of pretends that that doesn't exist. It's just yeah. what's inside that counts. But the fact of the matter is dating, as we've said before, is not PC. It's no. not PC what you're into, what you're not into, what you're attracted to, what you are not attracted to. Like everyone can pretend that, it, you know, I just care that you're beautiful on yeah, the inside. Yeah, I just inside. wanted someone with a good soul. Yeah. yeah I, with a good soul who also is more than 5'8". And yeah, has hair. Uh, yeah, and makes the yeah, X makes number of dollars a year. <laughs> you, totally. I find it a little um, saccharine. Yeah. 
And how many of these, I don't, I didn't do the research. I kind of wish I had, but how many of these relationships since season one have lasted? You know, I haven't done the research either. So let's have our shanties tell us and maybe they'll tell us that we're like way off base and that all these couples stay together and it really is what's inside that counts. I, I, I'd, l- I'd love to be proven wrong. Uh, me it's too. It's my second favorite thing to be proven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this wraps with Paul and Micah agreeing to break things off with Amber and Kwame, respectively. And Andy, here you said, I wouldn't want to be stuck at a party talking with anyone other than Kwame and Brett. Yep. I think that was part of my issue with at least this first episode. It changes as it goes on a bit, but not a lot. Like, I didn't find myself liking a lot of the people. No. I don't find there to be a lot of very likable people. I I feel bad saying that. I I actually, I liked some of the men more. But yeah. I found some of the women, um, not all of them. No, there's some of them. I really like Tiffany. I really like Jacqueline. Yeah, me too. But some of the women, I was kind of like. Yeah, I almost mm. feel like they picked them to make us not like them. <laughs> oh. Okay, so now it fades to black and we got all excited and then there were more light bulbs. <laughs> Are you serious? We're not at the credits yet? We're not at the credits. Holy. Andy, here you said, oh, it's like a French existential hell. <laughs> It would not end. It kept fading out and then being like, more light bulbs. That's what it would be. Like you're suddenly in a room and like a show comes on. You're like, you don't know, you're you're, you're with a few other people. Yeah. You're just like, what, what are we doing here? Yeah. And then suddenly there's a screen and the show comes on. And it's like this new show. And you're like, wow, this show looks cool. Yeah. And then you start watching and you're like, okay, hmm, yeah. it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. And then like it fades out and it comes back and you're like, uh, 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 I don't really like this show. And that and goes on forever. Forever. Oh. forever. <laughs> Never the credits. Never the credits. Okay, so now Brett is talking to Tiffany in the pods. He gifts her a shoe that he designed that represents his beginning. Mm-hmm. And it represents following what makes you happy. Yeah, which is sweet. Tiffany is deeply moved by this. So yeah. much so that they reuse a shot of her going... <sighs> <laughs> They do it up close and then they do it far away. And Andy, you said, wow, she really loves that shoe. (laughs) She says she's so inspired by him, wants to be a better person for him. She already feels she's in love with him. And Andy, you said, or maybe it's the half bottle of whiskey on the floor. (laughs) There was a lot of drinking. Oh, yeah. This seems to be this thing that no one's talking about. They do this on The Bachelor, too. I got the sense that everyone was like at least tipsy all the time. Yeah. Which also makes you... Uh-huh. think you like yeah. someone more than Get you do. Get married fast. Vegas is filled with, <laughs> with drunk marriages. Brett has a strong reaction to this, says he hasn't heard much of that word in his life. He wants to work on being more comfortable with that word. He says she's special. He truly feels like they're the perfect match, dot, dot, dot. Are you there? Hello? She's passed out. <laughs> she's actually... She's <laughs> She's a closed mouth sleeper, at least. She is. Yeah, she's she's a very very elegant. This was probably our first uh, real laugh of the whole episode. Yeah, that was the best. I don't know if it was supposed to be. No, but it was. And the thing is, I can't tell. Is that supposed to be something we found funny? What's to me is the funniest part about it is the meta aspect is that they thought that was a cliffhanger. (laughs) (laughs) And I can't think of a more appropriate cliffhanger than someone sleeping on a couch for the show. (laughs) Okay, so the music becomes all tense. Brett leaves. He's very upset. He reports back to the guys and says, I'm done. I'm done. And Andy, you said, me too. (laughs) Okay, so with episode two, a few ladies come in and wake up Tiffany. And when she realizes Brett is gone, she feels pretty terrible. Okay, so Jacqueline and her two main connections are Josh and Marshall. And she says, we're in the ring right now with Evander Field and Mike Tyson. (laughs) No respect for boxing at all. You were really upset about this. Evander Field. Because it's like a, like a, someone in the name of a law firm, <laughs> a Vanderfield and Rosenblatt. <laughs> we will get you top dollar for your injuries. Injury attorneys. Call one. 800-888-8888. Except Barnes, Barnes died. So yeah. it's sad now. It's it only Salino. Yeah. And the new jingle is pretty weak. I got to say it's no Salino it's and Barnes. Car- Salino and Barnes is all time hits. Car crash. Call Salino. Wow. How do you know that? <laughs> But the number changed too. Yeah. It's now it's one, a bunch eight, of eight, fives. One, eight, 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 five, 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 <laughs> five. But I have to admit, the old jingle when yeah. Barnes was still alive. Salino and Barnes, injury attorneys, 800-888-8888. That'll be with me forever. It's a great jingle. All time great. Yeah. It's up there with Carmel is the greatest. Oh, what's, which one's Carmel again? Six, 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 six. Six 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 six. You're going too crazy there. Let's keep it simple. 
Six, 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 six. Remember six. Driving to the airport. Remember six. Da, 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 da. Remember six. Going to the something. Remember six. The best ride in town. So wherever you need to go, Carmel is the number to know. Drive Carmel and be on time. Worldwide and nationwide. Six, 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 six. Six 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 sixty six. Oh my God! Was this before the first three digits of a phone number? I think it. It, it was assumed that it was eight hundred. Oh know. wow! Okay, good job, Andy. You know my biggest issue with that jingle is what is that they say worldwide before nationwide. <laughs> I've always had trouble with that. <laughs> okay, so Jacqueline talks to Marshall in the pods. She reveals she has a Roomba named Marshall. That's uncanny. She named her Roomba. That's yeah, cute. Yeah, I think that's super cute. Yeah. She reveals she was raised super strict by her parents and now finds herself keeping a lot from her parents because they are so hard on her. She doesn't want to be like that with her kids. He's afraid he will raise his kids how his dad raised him. He was never good at math and his dad would sort of berate him and would say that one day he would be on the side of the road begging for money and he wouldn't stop to help him. Yikes. That was pretty rough. Yeah. Parenting, it can really run the gamut, can yeah. it? Because I also think helicopter parenting or, you know, the parents who are like, oh, you're always right is not good either. Parenting but- is basically like how little can you screw up? Uh, it's not how good a parent you can be. It's yeah. how few mistakes can you make? Jacqueline handles this really well. I've got to say, she says he's doing so well. Look where he is today. She says if you were on the side of the road, she'd give him a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> She has to give himself grace. I really like how she handled this. It was super sweet. Jacqueline has a really lovely ability to go from being kind of this like spunky. She's like, ha ha ha. And to being like, like very nurturing. Yeah. She's got depth of character. Yeah. Yeah. She's got many colors that I really enjoy. So now Tiffany, she feels pretty bad for falling asleep on Brett. So in the pods, she apologizes, confesses to falling asleep. She says he came at the right time in her life. He inspires her. She thinks it's him. He says it's great to hear her voice, but not hearing her voice the other night was a gut punch. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. But he says at the end of the day, it's a small thing that will wind up being a funny part of their story. And he proposes and she squeals, <laughs> yes. And this is where we have to bring up the bouquet. And bokeh, B-O-K-E-H, it's a term for like out of focus. Yeah, where like, like reflective things, lights. They yeah, come in the into foreground. The foreground. Yeah, I think sometimes it can be in the background or the, the foreground. Screen. Yeah, it got pretty sickening after a while. I've that's an, an aesthetic choice of this show that I find very cheap yeah. and it, extremely repetitive. It's, it's almost pretentious. It's like obnoxious. It's you obnoxious. know what they're saying? They're like, yeah. "Welcome to the real dating show." <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, I feel so connected with you. And the camera's always like moving. Always. always. The camera's moving. The bokeh is moving. And it'll cross right across their face and obscure their entire face. At one point, Andy, you're like, where is she? <laughs> I will say this. Netflix clearly is not losing money on this show. No. So whatever formula they're using seems to be working. Yeah, but I will, to I will stand by that this bokeh sucks oh i do not like it it got in the first episode we were like okay and halfway through this episode we were like wait oh so this is just the thing this is what they do if they did it once an episode for like a special moment yeah it also tries to create special moments out of moments that aren't that special sometimes totally i could not agree more i'm like watching this oh this isn't that interesting like oh there's bokeh oh we got (laughs) something going on here it's overused. I actually think that it could be really powerful if they used it about 20%. I agree. Yeah. I do not like that bouquet. <laughs> I do not like that bouquet on the screen. I do not like that bouquet on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, lost my way there. So Kwame now in the pods with Micah. She says she feels so strongly about him, but the slow burn is maybe how it's supposed to go. Mm. And they should explore their other connections. Glory he- hole. <laughs> where would come in handy. He looks absolutely devastated, takes a moment and then says, okay, cool. I wish you the best. Bye. I think that this is a very human reaction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The idea of just like turning, like his face showed how, how crestfallen he was. And yeah. if she were able to see it, she would have seen that. Obviously, but because, you know, she couldn't see him, he like snapped into that, yeah. you know, that shielded and, version of himself. And it was, it was, it was a very appropriate, proud response in 100%. that situation. hundred percent. Because we know those can go the wrong way too. Yes. Where someone gets indignant and yes. nasty. 
no, he, I thought, handled this perfectly. Perfectly. And in his confessional, Kwame says, that's kind of fucked up, isn't it? He yes. cries. It's absolutely heartbreaking. I, uh, yeah, it's really sad. It is really sad. I didn't think I would be touched, but this, oh, this scene touched me. This Kwame was, pulls my heartstrings. To 100%. I actually think this was the most touching moment in all three episodes. Yeah, was definitely. Kwame just letting it out alone in the yeah. kitchen. Uh, okay, so now Micah reports back to Irina. And without saying she's irked, she kind of seems irked that Kwame didn't have a bigger reaction. She's like, yeah, he yeah. just seemed like he didn't care, <laughs> which bothers me. Yeah, I agree. Like she wanted him to be like yes, crumbled to, in a pile to grovel, of tears. Yeah, and to grovel. cry. Yeah. yeah. If she didn't get her due, she yeah, didn't get her she, satisfying uh, ending yeah. that she caused. Yes. Okay, so now it's Paul's turn in the pods with Amber. This takes longer than expected, and we see Micah getting concerned. Mm. And finally he says, I think there's only so far you can take it with two people, and I think I have to explore my other connection. Andy, you felt breaking up in these pods is not that big a deal. No. And that's why you think Kwame had the perfect be. reaction. Yeah. yeah. He didn't owe Micah more than what he gave no, her. No, I feel like it should be in an interview where, like, if they told you you weren't getting the job in the interview, which which they, I I think they do sometimes, uh-huh. b- brave interviewers, Yeah. where they're just like, listen, you know, we've interviewed a lot of candidates and, you know, I know you've come a long way. There's been a lot of rounds of interview. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just afraid to say that you are really good, but we are not going to be able to have you come on board to a Vanderfield and Rosenblatt. <laughs> So Amber does not take this as well as Kwame did. She cries and says, fuck you, Paul. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Hard. Paul heads back to the guy's quarters. And of all the people to whine to, I don't remember who the other guy was, but he's whining to two people and Kwame is one of them. And he's like, at least when you're being broken up with, there's a villain in your story, but yeah. it sucks being the villain of your own story. And Kwame's like... <laughs> Hold my <laughs> giant beer. Oh, his reaction's so great. He's very irked by this. And I he should be to irked. That. I don't understand how Paul thought this. Did Paul not Zero know? Zero awareness. Is he it, had to know. No, maybe Paul didn't know that Micah's other connection was Kwame. Is that possible? I don't think that's... It's it, it, possible. I, that's the only it's way unlikely. I can make sense of this. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, yeah. maybe, but it's unlikely. Yeah. But even nonetheless, there is something funny, but he's like, I'm the villain. There is something about him describing himself as the villain, but feeling sorry for himself. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, but you know, it was great Kwame again. He brings it to the line. Like a lot of people would have lost their shit over this. Yeah. But he does it in such a beautiful way. Yeah. He like doesn't even tell Paul that he's pissed. No, he's, he's doing too... it for himself. Yeah. He's just like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, sorry to hear about that. <laughs> well, and Paul's too busy wallowing in his own self pity of being it. the villain of his own yeah. story to notice. Yeah. You know what this is? This represents to me is a guy who's excelled at professional sports. There's oh. a certain level of of self confidence, a certain level of just like you know I'm good. I yeah. don't have anything to prove mm. that you get from really successful. I don't know how successful. Maybe he was not that great. I don't. I mean, know. he was pro. He so was that's pro. That's good enough. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. But when I used to go to the boxing gym, it was always the guys who had a good pro career that never caused trouble. Mm. Like you could you could make fun of them. You know, they could have a bad day in the ring. Yeah. Always cool, collected, friendly. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because like sing, as a singer, I've noticed that the more successful the singer, I meaning the bigger the career they have, the more yeah. impressive their resume or whatever, the less shit talky or criticizing other singers they are. Always. And meanwhile, the people who are like more young artist level, like which in the real non-singing world would be like more like intern level, yeah. like people who are at the start of their careers and trying to get their feet under them and try to build their experience. And maybe they're covering that big singer. Like there are the ones who will like criticize other yeah, singers yeah, yeah. technique or even that big singers technique, stuff like that. And it just shows insecurity really. Well, it's, it's beware the person who has something to prove. Mm-hmm. And this is a generalization. Yeah. I don't want people to think that everybody who's not a professional at something yeah, yeah, is yeah, going to yeah, be a yeah, dick, yeah. No, but, but you do, rarely see successful professionals showing this that kind of like uh ignorant weakness Mm, well put (laughs) all this to say is that we love kwame (laughs) yeah we really really love i don't know how anyone couldn't i was hanging on to kwame like like a lifeboat (laughs) in like a shark infested water i was just like please don't sing (laughs) get me through this so now micah and irina chat and by chat i mean talk shit they uh yeah, a lot of shit this talking. is not 
a great showing. No, I, it almost felt like they were trying to be dicks. They're like, we're going to be villains. Let's do it. It's it work. That's how it felt because Amber returns from being broken up with and she's clearly very upset. And no. if, and Micah does that thing where she's like kind of smiling and then realizes that she shouldn't be smiling and like it's like oh but she seems really upset. Mm. But then she sends Irina to go and eavesdrop on the conversation, like the yeah. tearful conversation of Amber is crying to Chelsea. I think it's Chelsea, uh, you know, about how heartbreaking this is, what she's just been through. And Irina's eavesdropping and like eating and yeah. laughing and smiling at her. Oh, what was that? How did she think anyone, I mean, unless she was really saying like, I'm going to get more Instagram followers for being a complete asshole. How is she thinking in any yeah, but way see, that's Yeah, see, that's what's normal. interesting is that on this show, you don't, it's unlike The Bachelor where being an asshole will get you more airtime, which can equate to more Instagram followers. At least it might have like four or five years ago, not yeah. anymore necessarily. Yeah. But in this case, all Irina needs to do to get Instagram followers is find a connection and make it to the next level. Right. So to me, this is just, bitchiness like Terrible. i don't understand how you could interpret this other than just being catty inexcusable it's so nasty even if you meant to do it it's inexcusable and if you didn't mean to do it it's even more inexcusable mm. well yeah i agree with that okay so now brett and tiffany meet in person so they're mm. our first couple meeting in person they run into each other's arms and kiss immediately he takes a look at her and says you're perfect this is very sweet super cute they sit and talk he and he's literally crying yeah he's precious i mean she got a winner and he did yeah. too but yeah but, but spread is oh, that was my second Brett. he was my runner we do up. love us some bread also yeah. he pulls off a brocade blazer like no one's oh, business oh man could you imagine me trying to pull that off i honestly i loved it so much that i was like i kind of want to explore that idea it's not happening i mean for a dressy occasion i can't i can't do it i think you underestimate yourself andy all right or at least me. You underestimate me and my ability to pick the right brocade blazer you for did, you. You did make me go out in public with those cream sweatpants. <laughs> I, that was a mistake. No, I like them. No. No, you shush. No, I like I your cream I felt uncomfortable in those. <laughs> you were like, everyone's looking at my legs. <laughs> Okay, so now Marshall is in the pods with Jacqueline. He reads her poetry. He says he's in love with her. And she reveals that she has another connection and that this other connection has told her that he's packed up his stuff saying that if it's not her, it's no one. Hmm. And Marshall, I guess maybe this is like an etiquette thing because Marshall's reaction to this felt very strong to yeah. me. Yeah. Stronger than I felt this information warranted. So maybe I don't understand what a faux pas it is to kind of give someone, it is sort of an ultimatum. It's like, if it's not you, it's no one. Like my bags are packed, like choose me or else, or else. I, I just got the feeling that Marshall is just a kind of a jealous guy. So he says she wouldn't bring that up at all if she didn't have feelings, but he seems really focused on his irritation with this other person pulling that move as he calls it. So the packing things up move. I mean, come on. So ja Jacqueline now cries in the women's quarters and Irina is coming comforting her until uh, comforting she's like looking at her and mm -hmm. talking to her yeah. and then micah comes in behind jacquelina and she and irina make eyes at each other like and become bitchy again oh yeah like micah's like why is she crying and like i mean i'm, <laughs> I'm just adding words to face expressions here and irina's like like they're being uh, super bitchy. Yeah, like, and Jacqueline is not only right there, like feet away, but also bawling. Can you imagine what kind of things those two girls say about their friends to their other friends behind their back? Oh my God. When cameras are not on them. No, I'm saying in their own, their actual friends in yeah, life. Yes. Like if you're friends with Arena or Micah, beware. No, oh, You're getting totally. talked about like crazy behind your back. I know two girls like this. I even wrote, I know two girls like this who individually they're great. And mm -hmm. by the way, I've distanced myself from these girls because because of this exact reason, actually. But individually, they're great. But then together, you see a side of them where right, you're like, right, oh, right, right. that cannot not be your true colors. Right. They like unlock it in each other where they become super bitchy when they're together. And well, they're it's talking like alcohol. About it's like having that really close friend you bond with over something is the same thing as like drinking too much. You drink too much, you know, in, in vino veritas. Mm, you start well, saying depending the on, truth. Yeah, and depending it's bad on who sometimes. you are, that can really be a bad look. Yeah. Mel Gibson would have some things to say about that. <laughs> So, Andy, look what I have here. Ooh, that's slick. It's slick, right? I'm very into it. Look at this. Ooh, nice Ooh. reveal. Oh, that <laughs> is, ooh, that's a sexy razor. <laughs> it's an Athena Club razor. Look at this. It has the weight 
mm. of a razor that you would have for many years, honestly. It yeah. has a feel to it. You want to wait. Yeah. Oh, I don't want too light a razor, no. let me tell you. But nor too heavy, though. You want to be able to travel with it. They really nailed it with this. One of my favorite parts, though, of the Athena Club razor is their magnetic hook. Look at this. Oh, I've looked at it. It makes it so elegant. Like the razor doesn't sit with your other stuff. No, and, and then if you let a razor sit like on the on the rim of your tub, it eventually makes like a razor shaped like mold stain. Well, that's the thing because embedded in the blade of this razor is water activated shea butter and hyaluronic acid serum. And if that just stays wet all the time, it's going to just ooze out and make yep. a gooey mess. Mm -hmm. And so they understood that and then gave you a perfect magnetic hook. Look at how pleasing that it's is. It's so pleasing. I want to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> this never gets old to me. And by the way, it literally makes the bathroom look better. So it comes with two blades and the magnetic hook, and you get to pick what color you get. It has the quality of something you should pay more for. Totally. And something that will save you a lot of money. And you can't discount the thousands of five-star reviews this thing has online. Honestly, the reviews... It almost seems like it's too good to be true. The crowdsourced reviews of this razor were damn right. Head to athenaclub.com and use promo code DEARSHANDY to get 25% off your first order. That's athenaclub.com and use code DEARSHANDY for 25% off. Athena Club also recently launched in Target stores nationwide, so be sure to check out their shaving aisle to buy their products in store in real life. So Andy, there was a time where the most important thing you could have for your business, networking and making sure your name got out there, was a business card yeah isn't that funny that's it and then it was an infomercial <laughs> i don't know about that but suffice to say whether or not an infomercial came in between or not today that business card is a website you need it i mean it really does legitimize you you can have all the accolades in the world all the good reviews in the world but if you don't have a website just a sort of landing page and i'll tell you something speaking of that landing page i've looked up product and i'll be like oh i like this but let me check their website i'll go to their website Within three seconds oh, so of true. the landing, seeing the landing page, I'm like, I trust them or I don't trust it's them. It's so true. Squarespace is your savior. Mm -hmm. Squarespace will guide you to the light of actually having a respectable website without a huge amount of heavy lifting. Yeah, you don't need to know how to code. You don't even really need to know how to honestly <laughs> do much at all. If you know how to use a mouse... You can pretty much use Squarespace. A mouse. Oh, a oh, mouse. Well, that was cute. A, a mouse is always a mouse for me. So Squarespace's claim to fame is their templates. Yeah. Let's be real here. Their templates make a world of difference because otherwise you're just staring at a blank square space mm -hmm. and you're like, where do, do I start? I do? How do I put the navigation on the top? How do I make one page flow into the next? Squarespace has already thought of all these things for you. And they have features up the wazoo. Yes. Every feature you could possibly imagine. I love how not only do they have the features, but the layouts for those features. Let's say you are going to be selling product on your website. You can do scheduling on your website. You can have a blog on your website. You can have a mailing list. You can. It's honestly endless. Anything you could possibly design for your website they have. And you can't discount how long they've been around. Oh, it's a good point. They've had all the data to look at. Mm -hmm. they've, and they've made all the mistakes. And they only keep getting better. Yeah, soon they'll take over. <laughs> So head to squarespace.com slash Shandy for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash Shandy for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Shandy for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so at the men's quarters now, Marshall finds out that it's Josh. And yeah. Josh is, you know, to his credit, he's like, I think you're talking about me. Andy, you said Josh is either a boxer or a UFC guy. Just one, one glance. hundred percent guaranteed. Mm. Clearly, he's got a, a, a fractured nose mm. and he's got cauliflower ears, mm. which are a result of your ears just getting beaten and beaten and beaten over again. And that's what happens. They start looking like cauliflower. I mean, just being a boxing guy yourself, you were like, Josh is a boxer 100%. or a UFC guy. I guarantee it. I want to hear from it, Josh. Which one is it? <laughs> boxing or UFC or both? Okay. So now there's a cute conversation between Chelsea and Bliss talking about having babies and getting a joint nanny. They should have a love is blind where you go through the whole process blind. You actually like, like send your sperm over <laughs> and, and you raise a kid behind the wall and then you see each other. You just pass the baby back and forth yeah, through yeah, the yeah. glory it's hole. Like diaper, there's like a diaper cleaning hole. So now Chelsea in the pause, she talks to Kwame. Andy, you said, I can't take this scene seriously until I see some bokeh. 
And then the bouquet came and you said, no, there it is. It's mm, serious now. Safe again. Chelsea cries. She says it's hard. Kwame says he's sorry. He'll try to take some of the weight off her shoulders. So now Paul. In the pods, he talks to Micah. And as he starts talking about being in the presence of true love and it being like standing in the sun, the bouquet goes up a notch. Oh, yeah. This is heavy bouquet. He's like, will you marry me? <laughs> and she's like, yes. The people almost become the bouquet. Like the bouquet is the star. And then there's just people floating in the background. And here, Andy, we had a full conversation. We paused and had a full conversation about feeling like the excitement had at this point in a relationship. I cannot help but also attribute it at least partially to the fact that they know they're going to make it to the next level. Yeah. On the course. show. Yeah, they're winning. There's a winning element to this. Yes. Yeah, there has is. To be. They're, they're like, out of all the people that were cast on the show, I've made it to the next level. Yeah, it's it's Squid Game-ish. It's like making the merge on Survivor. Or better analogy, yeah. <laughs> Because making the merge on Survivor, even if you don't win, like, yes, of course, you're closer to winning or to yeah. finding love, mm. but you're you're now on the jury. Yeah, you make more money. You get to be part, you do make more money quite literally, yeah. but now you're just part of the show more. You're more memorable. You're going to be in every episode. You're going to be referred to by other people. Yeah. You get to do individual challenges for individual immunity. As with anything in life, when it becomes self-aware, it slowly loses its integrity. Mm. And we're, we're speaking as though we've seen the rest of the show, but I agree. I, I already feel like I would prefer season one to this season. I guarantee you that season one of this show was very good. Mm. I just by what I've seen, yeah. I know season one was good. Mm. I have no idea what season one was like. People can tell me you're wrong. Season one was the worst season. Yeah. I almost guarantee it was good. Mm. So now it's Zach's birthday. Oh, nice. Bliss is making him cupcakes and Arena observes that it's so wifey of her. Hmm. I don't know. It's funny. That could be sweet. If, if, a, if a friend were like, oh, that's so wifey of you. How cute. Like I would be like, oh, that's sweet. But because it's coming out I of know. Arena's mouth, I'm like, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she asks Bliss for one of the candles, which is to me so strange. Yeah. And Bliss awkwardly. And I love that she refused. Yeah. She said no. No. But she was really. Who are you? And she was kind of like, I don't know why you would ask me that. Like, why would you put me in that position? I, I got to tell you, Bliss. I'm very upset that she does not make it to the next level in the show simply because I really, 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 really liked yeah, her. I wanted too. to see more of her. It's very symbolic that Bliss did not make it on the show. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Irina now in the pod talks to Zach. She wishes him a happy birthday and proceeds to talk mild shit about Bliss, saying there's tension. She mm. names her name here. He says as he's gotten to know her, Irina, he realizes that she's thoughtful. It's painful to imagine people not understanding her because she's so blunt. Mm. And throughout this conversation, the bokeh is ridiculous. Andy, you called it an SNL sketch. There were if, points where while they were talking, their entire face would be obscured. Yeah. I felt like at one point someone was going to like like move the bokeh out of the way. Like, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> like, like going through a forest of bokeh. Like, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Now Bliss is turning the pods. She talks to Zach. She gives him the cupcakes. She says it's been a hard day. She's trying not to talk badly about others. With a bit of nudging, she... Describes her difficulties with Arena. I'm pretty sure without really naming her, but it's pretty clear who she's talking about. Yeah. She says that this is a test for Zach too. Does he have good judgment? The gist being, if you pick Arena, I know who you are, what kind of person you are. Yeah. Later on in episode three, he takes issue with this, but I actually, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. No. But partly because I don't really like Arena's well, you, showing. you have that show. knowledge, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have that, I guess. No. From his perspective, it might sound manipulative, but from her perspective and from our perspective, having seen what she can see, it's like, no, she's right. I compare this show in a way to that game. I don't know if you played this when you were kids, but you blindfold someone. It's like pin the tail on the donkey. Okay. Wait, is it, is it pin the tail on I mean, the donkey? It, <laughs> that game? Uh, it, 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 it is pin the By tail By the way, the I love pin the tail on the donkey. You do? Yeah. When I was a kid, I was very good at it. I mean, people, kids love games that they're good at, first yeah. of all. And I just loved it. I also love pinatas. Sorry. For some reason, I put those two together because at a kid's birthday party, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had those many are... birthday parties where we had both of those. I mean, as far as kids' birthday parties go, uh -huh. those two things are real shining stars. Yes. I mean, the rest are... Oh, you mean you don't like clowns? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pin the story... Wait, pin the tail of the donkey story. Yeah, so what... Yeah, thanks. <laughs> So when I was a kid and I played that game, but you know, when we played it back in the day, there was a lot less concern about people getting hurt and stuff. No one cared. I was honestly, it a pin? Yeah, it was a pin. 
and no one was helping you. And we did it on a tree. It was a camp. So there'd be a donkey on a tree, like a big tree. And someone would just be rolling around with a pin. And then they would invariably smack their face into the tree. Oh my and people goodness. would be laughing. Like wow. this was the way it was back then. Like people just didn't care about anything. Oh, okay. So in my youth, anyway. it was like sticky. It was just a sticky thing on the oh, wall. Oh, that's cute. So I feel like this show is sort of like Pin the Tail on the Donkey in the sense that it's way easier for a, someone looking at the person trying to pin the tail on the donkey to say, oh, obviously, come on, it's yeah. right there. Just go. Can't you do it? Come on, just totally. go. Go to the tail. It's right there. I just, mean, that could be applied to many things, not just pin the tail. I know, the but I just picked pin the tail. <laughs> the donkey. It's probably a mistake because we've gone on a huge tangent. But I do feel there is an element of that here where you're like, come on, can you figure this out? But we yeah. have so much more information. Yeah. We can't put ourselves it's in their shoes. It's actually very survive. Not to bring up Survivor again, but it's very survivory. Yeah. Where you're like, no, no, no. That person is pretending to, to be in an alliance with you, but they're talking shit about you. Like, don't do that. No, you should use your idol now. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so easy from our so sofas. Easy. Yeah. yeah. So we can't blame anybody. Really. No. And now the episode ends with the cliffhanger of Paul and Micah about to meet. All right. Episode three. Are you ready? Yes. So Paul and Micah meet. They hug immediately. Peck, overall, they seem very pleased yeah. with each other's appearances, yeah. even though appearances don't matter. No, they don't. Jacqueline in the pods with Marshall. He says he talked to Josh. Josh isn't walking out of there with her. That's it. Hmm. I, hmm. I have mixed feelings about this. Because on one hand, I'm like, okay, you could argue Josh is I'm leaving. If I'm not leaving here with you, like I'm just leaving or like I'm packed my bags. If it's not you, that's it. You could argue that's manipulative or that's romantic. Like you could sort of argue two sides of that coin, really. And then I also feel like Marshall being like, I talked to Josh. She's not leaving with you. That's it. Like I'm proposing to you now. Yeah. Like you could argue, so argue that's either controlling or a little bit romantic. It felt like both controlling and romantic to me. Yeah. And it's Shouldn't that be up to her? I like agree. you don't need to go talk to him. Like let her figure that out. Yeah. I think maybe that's, she, she's kind of into that. She liked the well, sort of, she you said, know, the element of like how, how, dominant he was in that situation and how he just sort of was like you're mine yeah and i'm gonna stop anybody else from having you and maybe she was just kind of into that. she said know. that it shows that he cares so it's also possible that the entire thing with josh was blown out of proportion and maybe she just talked to him a couple of times and was never going to pick him and they just played that up so that there was more of a cliffhanger. i think it's more that i'm not going to put this on marshall yeah. i think marshall was fine i i do think that maybe he was there was a little element of, of jealousy here that rose slightly above or maybe it should have. Yeah, I agree. But overall, it's, you know, we, we don't have the full picture well, here, but I think it was probably slightly manipulated by production to make this look like it was Maybe. I mean, I don't know Juliet how much we can thing. blame things on production with this show versus The Bachelor, but maybe. It's true. But ultimately, you cannot deny that he knew his audience. He was reading... Jacqueline well because yeah. this did land well with her so who are we to be like you're wrong no I, you know? I, I, I gotta hand it to Josh like Josh took this pretty well for a guy who you know probably beats people up <laughs> often <laughs> He was. He took this pretty well. I would have gotten pissed off. I love how you're so like Josh is like a guy that doesn't make it past this episode. Like he's hardly in the show, and you're like, I want to know about his boxing career. <laughs> Look at those cauliflower ears. He's got a handsome ear. <laughs> so Marshall proposes, and Jacqueline says a thousand times yes. And now we are back to Kwame in the pods with Chelsea. He says he loves her confidence, her confidence in him, her, her confidence in herself, and she says that he makes her feel so calm. I actually can see that. Kwame huh. gives calming vibes. Yeah, he gives calming vibes. <laughs> he plays guitar and sings her a song that he seems to have prepared for her, and this makes her ball. And now we're song. Yeah, it's all right. It was better than another song. Oh God. <laughs> okay, so now Zach. Zach in the pods with Irina. He has left Ralph, a stuffed animal, in her room, and she says, "Oh, he's so cute." She calls Ralph cute uh, several times. Cute, uh. He reveals that Ralph was his mother's stuffed animal. And she asks if Bliss has also met Ralph. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Something about that. They kind of skimmed over that, but it cracked me up. Oh, it's like a love triangle with a stuffed animal. <laughs> so now Irina asks what Zach sees in Bliss that he doesn't see in her. It's a fun question to answer. <laughs> He says with her, the connection is fire, but he says that she's more vicious than he is. Mm, he's got that right. Mm. But she seems to take issue with this. She's sort of offended. He weirdly tells her that Bliss doesn't like her. 
It's a strange choice. Oh, well, there's going to be a lot of strange choices from Zach. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make her a bad person. That doesn't make Irina a bad person, the fact that Bliss doesn't like her. I just don't understand why he would feel the need to tell her this. Yeah. I think this is the sort of thing that can sort of go like a little bit left up to the imagination. He doesn't need to be like, oh, the other woman I'm considering actively doesn't like you. And now back in the guy's quarters, Zach is talking to Marshall. He says, Irina's a little immature. She plays games, like girl mm-hmm. games to try to win a man. And that's concerning. But he does feel that she would have his back no matter what. Mm. Meanwhile, with Bliss, he says he loves her mind. He Mm. loves the way she thinks. And here, Andy, we paused and I was like, that. Yeah. That's what you should go with. That's it. That's how I feel about you. Oh. Your mind. Like everything else. Yeah. That's that's what's (laughs) oh. No, everything's good. That's serviceable. It's just the mind. That's that's what makes someone stand out. Zach now in the pods with Bliss, she reveals her dad didn't like her exes. No one she thinks would be good enough in her dad's eyes for her. He says that worries him because he's felt judged by other girlfriends' families for his upbringing. And she says that he shouldn't worry so much about acceptance. Mm -hmm. I mean... That's one of those easier said than done things. He says he loves her. She says she loves him. He brings up Irina now and sort of defends her, saying that Irina's not a bad person. And he seems to take issue with the fact that Bliss said what she said about, like, if you pick Irina, then I'll know what kind of person you are. And Bliss, I got it. Bliss takes the high road. Yeah. When when there's a fork in the road, she always takes the high road. She says Irina's not a bad person. She's not saying she's a bad person. She's just seen behaviors that aren't good. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you something. There is very little shit talking on this show and you could tell production is not encouraging it. Mm -hmm. So when people do shit talk, Mm -hmm. it's probably very legitimate shit talk. Yeah, I agree. Jacqueline and Marshall meet in person now. Honestly, his face when he sees her is so sweet. Yeah. We notice how little fanfare there is around the ring on this show. No, it's just like, oh. oh, oh. I kind of would, like, look, I I think it's lovely. Like, yeah, the ring doesn't matter. But I, since there was a mention at one point of like, oh, yeah, I picked that for you when I saw that, I thought of you. Just being the fashion jewelry accessory, whatever person that I am, I would have I, liked to have seen. I, I don't think they have time for it. <laughs> I would like to just see the selection from which they chose the rings and why they chose what they chose personally. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now Zach in the pods with Bliss, he breaks up with her and starts sobbing. And by the way, the last time he was in the pods with her, he said he loved her. I think this is taking some getting used to. Yeah. It's like someone will go from saying, I love you, I love you too, to being like, okay, I just love another person more. <laughs> it's a bit like Bachelor, but like a lot and way fewer days. It, but it's also the, the thing about this show that to me is dumb. Mm. I mean, the, the one thing <laughs> I figured it out is that they're not getting engaged. It's BS. There's not. A, this is not an engagement. There's yeah. no legal bond here. This is absolute horseshit. Yeah. What they're doing is saying, "I will agree to date you." I mean, it's not dissimilar from The Bachelor in that sense. Mm, there's a little more. There's a little more uh, weight. Well, I think we can actually credit credit The Bachelor with making this a thing. The Bachelor was the first show to be like, okay, you're going to watch people fall in love, but it's going to end with a ring on someone's finger. They're getting married, like taking it to that level. And at the time, everyone was like, oh, like that's so shocking. It's way too fast. Like, how can people commit to something like that? And now you get shows like Married at First Sight. Right, right, right. You know, like now ending with an an engagement's like, of course you're ending. If you're not ending with an engagement, then what was the point? What was the point? It's all waste of time. So I think that some guy was like, we can have people get engaged. And so I was like, that's ridiculous. How can you do that? It's such a such a sacred thing. I mean, it's spending the rest of your life. They just get engaged. What are you worried about? Like, mm. oh, they just, just get, get engaged. engaged. Yeah, of it just course. raises the stakes. It's like getting a nice bouquet on the first date. It doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. It I, means nothing. I totally agree. Which we will see shortly how much <laughs> it means nothing yeah. in the Arena Zach situation. Oh, okay. Oh, you don't think that they're going to end up getting married? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> you just jumped to like level 15. I'm talking about what happens right when they get engaged. Okay. So Zach in the pods with bliss, he breaks up with her and starts sobbing here. She takes this very classily surprising nobody, mm-hmm. wishes him the best. And now bliss goes and talks to Tiffany. Tiffany asks if bliss fought for him. And Bliss says she didn't want to. The right person would know in their heart it's her. This is the right person for him. And I wrote, I love Bliss. So composed. She's just lovely. And how true is that? It shows such a sense of self 
the yeah. sense of self-worth yeah. of her value, knowing that the right guy would not pick someone else. I, I don't need to convince him. And also she's saying this in context of the show. Like yes. she recognizes what this is. Yes. It's not like some guy she was dating for six months just dropped her like a brick. Now Kwame in the pods with Chelsea, he gives her a beautiful speech, proposes, she says yes. And now we're on to Zach in the pods with Irina. Zach sings Irina a song that he wrote for her. Uh... <laughs> With this is, I, I mean, I give the guy props. Absolutely. He gets props for taking this on. It shows a fearlessness. Uh, a, it shows a fearlessness. Yes. But also a, a, a tone a deafness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like if you're completely tone deaf and you still are writing ballads that you're willing to sing on national TV, yeah. there's, a, there's a real deep lack of self-awareness there, I mm. think. Andy, you said there's two notes and they're both wrong. <laughs> Okay, so he proposes to Irina and she accepts. And now Kwame and Chelsea officially meet. They run into each other's arms. I loved this. Yeah, the two too. of them. Nice. Cute. Yeah. Well, I, I just like. It was great. I mean, I just love Kwame. <laughs> I know. We really love Kwame. This is going to become a very biased recap. Yeah. And here, though, Andy, you said the music in this show is really hurting. I got to say. It was kind of painful. Look, I, I have a soft spot for The Bachelor in some ways, and I also think The Bachelor is way worse in other ways. But the music on The Bachelor is not bad. It's original. It's original. Like they have a composer who's doing like sweeping scores. Some of them are orchestrated. Some of them are like themed when they're in Thailand. They're giving like Thai sounding music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, it's just like one soft pop or like soft dance song like forgettable piece of music after another, like some wispy, like a ah, woman's voice combined with like a uns uns over and over and over again. Well, it feels like that, you know, when the, when all the CD stores went out of business in the nineties, <laughs> no, no. like you'd have one of those bargain bins, also $2 bins of CDs. Yes. They just tossed a the bunch clearance of CDs. sale. Yeah. It was a clearance sale CD. Yes. Like oh. these are songs you don't even need rights for. <laughs> hmm. So finally, Zach and Irina meet. This is where things get interesting in a sort of uh, sick schadenfreude kind of way. I, th I think this is what, this is like the crash at a NASCAR. Yeah, this you This is what feel people, they're like, oh, I go to NASCAR to see the fast cars, the beautiful driving. Yeah. I mean, a lot no. of people go to see crashes. Yes, I agree. And I have to admit, I was perversely entertained. And I will say this about the show. Let's not be fooled where production wants this punchline to end. Oh, because yeah. they wouldn't have saved this for last if they really wanted this show to focus on amazing, joyous. Oh, well, that's a good that point blind. you're making. Because I actually think you know they can air these relationships in whatever order they yeah, want. I sure. based on what we're seeing, you know, there's no way to know that Zach and Arena really didn't get engaged. Like a, you know, could have been a week before. Well, I mean, Kwame. I don't know. I, th I don't know or how many several days. Several hours before. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many days we're working with here. But I agree that it shows that they, they put this last for a reason. And you know what? It anchor. worked because yep. it made me want to see what happens next. So it feels like neither of them were what they were expecting. Right? No. Yeah. They're kind of just looking at each other. Zach is sort of staring at her rather mm. awkwardly. And she's like, stop staring at me. Blink. He puts a ring on her finger and then whispers, do you want to kiss? Oh dear. And she's like, just a hug for now. And Yeah, we're only engaged. <laughs> Take it easy. And Irina in her confessional says, I thought he'd be a little more normal. Ugh. Yeah. I didn't... Ooh. Irina, gosh. Right. I don't even know what to say about this. This made me so uncomfortable. Normal? Yeah, what is It's that? like you can say you thought he'd be a little more X, Y, Z, but normal is not the word you should use in this context. She has to appreciate the setting. Yes. I mean, this is incredibly awkward and bizarre. Yeah. And unnatural. Like, everyone's going to be a little weird, especially if you're not what they expected, uh -huh. which I think in, it was two-way street I here. actually th yeah she kind of acted like he was the one acting all weird but I think she was making him out to be acting weirder than he was yeah. because she wasn't she into wasn't what into yeah she wasn't into him and, and how was he supposed to react I mean what is normal in this situation that's a good point Zach in his confessional said that Irina told him he looks like a cartoon character can you imagine if he said that to her Oof. I found this really harsh. Harsh. Especially since I think Zach's actually really good looking. And I will say this about Arena. You know, she did talk about these insecurities she had that she was bullied for mm -hmm. when she was younger. Yeah. And often people in those situations later in life become more empathetic as a result. Of course. And I feel like she's almost like, 
I want to be the people who bullied me. And the thing is, look, was his reaction perfect? Did he seem totally? No, he no. maybe held her gaze a little yeah, too long. Yeah, it was long. a little too yeah. long a gaze holding. <laughs> but I also, it's almost like this thing. He's like, what am I supposed to do? Like, it's like that stare where it's just, it's like, it's like you ever, something ever happened to you where you're like, you're, it's sensory overload. Like you're unable to process how you react and you're just kind of like frozen in this kind of like. I actually can picture myself in this situation doing something similar. Like I do feel like I would be like, you know, you're just sort of taking it all in and trying to like line, line up the dots. But I also feel it's like a deer in headlights. Yes. This is the weirdest, craziest situation. He just, he just had a mental car crash mm. and he's in shock. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think his well, reaction and the is show, weird. In his defense too, the show's designed for that. They're meant yeah. to be like, he, you're not what I expected or you are what I expected. And oh, like you're taking it the, all in. This is the car crash. Yeah. This is what everyone wanted to see. Yeah. And and he's doing what someone does in a car crash. They're in shock. Yeah. And she's being a jerk. I mean, that's how we feel about it. Okay, Andy, that's where the pods wrap. That's where our pod wraps. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have such mixed feelings about this. Yeah. I well, mean, I will admit nice. at one point watching these, I had <laughs> remorse. Yeah, in the middle. It was in the first third or yeah, so. Yeah, first third was tough. Yeah. But okay. I think we're on to the, the better things now. Yeah. I think this was like a really, you know, a very painful and, and, and necessary shit. <laughs> <laughs> that in the end might be satisfying. Yeah. I got off, you know, I got out of the bathroom. I felt lighter. <laughs> I felt like maybe that was all worth it. <laughs> All right, Shandies, fill us in on what you thought and what you thought of what we thought. We're, we're, we don't know what's going yeah, on Yeah, we're very this out of our element box. right now. We don't know what's happening. Yeah. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends yeah, and generally them. do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Shandy. We're almost at the end of this episode. Wait, this is the first episode? This is the second episode. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Mary, mother of Jesus.